Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof. Omar. Today we're going to discuss Jensen's inequality, which allows us to establish different inequalities in many different settings using this interesting phenomenon of functions that have a certain shape. So say you have a function f and it maps some subset of the reals to the reals um, and is concave. So a concave function is a function whose graph sort of arcs downward like this, right? Another way to talk about this is that it's second derivative, if we're familiar with calculus, is negative. Um, so in that case, if you have a concave function, then the, the inequality states that if you have a bunch of values, x1 through xn in the reals, then the function applied to their average, so this is actually um, in the domain s, uh, the function applied to their average is greater than or equal to the average of their function values. Now I want to give some intuition as to where this inequality comes from, starting with just the case that you have two points x1 and x2. So your graph of your function might look something like this. All right, and so imagine you had two points x1 and x2 lying here and let's say over here. So let's compare some values. So here is the point x1 and f of x1. And then here somewhere is the point x2, f of x2. Now Jensen's inequality compares the function value at the average to the average of the function values. Now the average of the two points x1 and x2 lies somewhere over here. And so this point over here has as its coordinates the average of the values x1 and x2 and the average, uh, the function applied to that average. Okay, but now there's this line segment below the actual curve. And the reason that the line segment that I'm speaking of, which is the line segment between x1 f of x1 and x2 f of x2, lies below the curve is because the shape of the curve is concave. And so if we project down to this point right over here, its x-coordinate is the average of the uh, values x1 and x2, but its y-coordinate is the actual average of these values because it's the midpoint. So it's a half of f of x1 plus a half of f of x2. Right, and so as a consequence, you get that this value right over here is bounded above by this value right over here, which is exactly this inequality in the case that we have exactly two points, x1 and x2. And so Jensen's inequality is like a generalization of this to many points that you can sort of prove inductively. Okay, great. Um, so the same kind of thing happens if your function looks like this instead, which is convex the inequality just reverses because the line segment between any of these two points is now above the actual curve. All right, so let's see examples of how to use Jensen's inequality to actually establish other inequalities. So we'll start off with the inequality called the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality, which states that if you have values x1 through xn that are non-negative, then their average, which is this right over here, is greater than or equal to the nth root of their product. Okay, so one way to actually establish this is to use a particular function whose domain is the non-negative real numbers and apply Jensen's inequality to it. And the function is gonna be the function f of x equal to logarithm of x. Okay, so if you look at the graph of log x, which is this graph right over here, it does look like the graph is concave. So if we apply Jensen's inequality to f, we would have that f at the average of these values x1 through xn is greater than or equal to the average of the function values. Okay, so let's actually plug this in and see what we get. On the left-hand side, we get the logarithm of the sum of all of these values. And on the right hand side, we get one over n times the sum of the logarithms. So log x1 plus log x2 up to log of xn. 
All right. So now if we want to actually get an inequality relating this to something, then since we have a logarithm right over here, we can exponentiate. Exponentiation preserves inequalities because the exponential function e to the x is increasing itself. So if we, expand, if we exponentiate both sides here, which I'll do over here, we get e to the log of this expression here, um, which is the argument in the logarithm itself, being greater than or equal to e to the one over log x1 uh, plus all the way to plus log xn. Okay, um, and we can simplify this expression here. In the exponent, we have one over n times the logarithm, we have the sum of values, so it's the logarithm of the product, right? And then we have this one over n being multiplied, which we can put in the exponent in the logarithm. And now we're taking e to that, and so we're left with x1 times x2 up to xn, all raised to the one over n. And that's actually exactly what we wanted in our inequality. That is what this right-hand side is. Okay, so a cool application of this inequality, Jensen's inequality, to establish the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality, which is used in a lot of settings. So let's end off with actually seeing an example um, that establishes an inequality that seems kind of obscure at first, but is amenable to um, Jensen's inequality. So the inequality looks like this. You're given positive real numbers a, b, and c, and you're given that the sum of the three numbers is equal to their product. And the question is asking to prove that this expression right over here is less than or equal to 3 fourths. And you notice there's some symmetry about the variables in the expressions. So usually the idea with applying Jess's inequality is to try to find something in the problem that is fixed um, or can be fixed and then create a function based on that that's concave that you can then apply Jensen's inequality to. Um, so in this case, we don't really see anything that's fixed given the information we have here, but we can kind of force that to happen by rewriting these expressions on the left by multiplying by um, the missing variable in each of the denominators that would force an ABC to appear. So we can do that by multiplying, for example, the first expression by a over a. So we get a or c over c, sorry, which gives us c over c plus abc. And then here we can do b over b plus abc. And then finally here a over a plus abc. And we're trying to establish that that's at most three fourths. Okay, um, so we can then now think about this as doing something with an actual function um, by now replacing these ABCs with a sum. So the function we're going to create is based on the sum of the values A plus B plus C. And what it looks like, given that ABC is actually the sum of these arguments, is it looks like this function uh, that we're going to create is the function f of x, which looks like x over um, s plus x. Now what this allows us to do is if we look at this left-hand side, the left-hand side of our inequality is f of a plus f of b plus f of c. So we'll be able to say something about this function if we're able to establish concavity in some way. Okay, so if we think about s as a fixed value, then for that fixed s, the function f of x looks like, um, well, it is x over s plus x, which can be rewritten as 1 minus s over s plus x. And if you actually graphed out this function, it is something that is concave. This thing is um, something like the 1 over x function, but with some shift and some stretching. Uh, and then what we're doing is we are 
negating that function and translating it up by one, right? So the negation um, will make it from convex to concave, and then the shifting up by one will shift it up, which doesn't change the shape. So this is a concave function. And that makes us happy because that tells us then that the left-hand side, which is the sum of the function values at a, b, and c, then has to be less than or equal to. Um, so before, in our original Jensen's, we'd have um, this over 3 right over here being less than or equal to uh, f at a plus b plus c over 3. And so if we multiply by 3, um, we'd get that this is less than or equal to 3 times f of a plus b plus c over 3. Okay, so let's figure out what f of a plus b plus c over 3 is. Well, this is f at this constant s over 3. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is we're looking at the values of this inequality when a plus b plus c is restricted to be a particular value s, establishing our inequality. So now, what is this f of s over 3? Uh, well, our function values here, so this is s over 3 all over s plus s over 3, and the contribution of s's go away. So we're left with a third over four thirds, which is a fourth. And so this quantity right over here then is less than or equal to one fourth, which means that overall this thing, which was this thing here, is indeed less than or equal to three-fourths. Cool. So an interesting application of this Jensen's inequality, which symmetrizes things and then uses that to create a function where we observe that the left-hand side is the sum of the function values and the function is concave together to be able to use Jensen's inequality. Great, so thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely subscribe to the channel.